Hey guys, now we're inside the boat. One of the main selling features that was a risk for us as the design department was a live well. So, first of all, there's many ways to rig this live well. You can get a clear lid, a solid lid, whatever you want. On this boat, they also wanted the window in the front. I wanna point this out. This is not a flange or a trim piece that you cut and you put in, which is the easy way. So this is all done by hand, it's all seamless. The acrylic, everything was bent. So what you're looking at is we have inside of here, we have one, two, three, four, six of the new Gemlux adjusters going on for his live well. So he could control his water flow, his intake and his outflow. This is a pressurized well. This valve right here, you have to open it up when this thing gets full to open this up because the water hits the airspace and it keeps all the water from sloshing around. So if you're out in a real foot and a half, two foot swells, chop, your bait is a lot calmer. It's not getting beat up. So this valve actually release and get the air out so you can open this. By the way, you can pick what you want, but we spec'd it with the friction hinges from Gemlux. If you look inside, you see how big this well is. There's nothing to snag bait on. You have an LED light against the side there, so it lights everything up. We did a light blue in here because of the window. So if it was a darker blue and you have the bait closed in with the water, you wouldn't be able to see the bait as good. So we did a lighter shade of blue. We made this little device because this is a real 55 gallon well. So this will measure the drain so he didn't have to stick his hand all the way in. So just something little useful tool that we made. It's pretty cool. But anyways, this is the selling feature of the boat. So many of the live wells are lower and spread out wider. The problem is that it forces you to bend down. The, so that's one thing. The other thing is, is that the water doesn't drain once in the boat. The third thing is, uh, excuse me, it won't drain while the boat's in the water. This does while it's in the water. Then the other thing is you get more storage because instead of going down and wide, we went narrow and taller. So now it's easier to get to. It's more cap uh, capacity. You have bigger storage on either side and we brought the live well in. So a lot of people were asking us, why did we bring it in? Draft. A lot of manufacturers lie about draft. This boat will always be between 12 and 16 inches with people, with gas, with fuel. That is extremely shallow for a boat like this to have that kind of water. So you got a 55 gallon pressurized well in the back. We have a 40 gallon well right under the seat. And then we have an additional 20 up front. Then we have a fish box, okay? So now we're moving this in. The reason why we have the motor well tucked in is not everybody wants a jack plate. So if you live in California and you're watching this YouTube video or you live up in the Northeast and you're fishing for striper and stuff and fishing the surf, you're not gonna run inside, you don't need a jack plate. Well, guess what? You take the jack plate off, put the motor on, and there you go, you can still trim up and down. On either side, huge hatches. He has those washed down in there. It's where he wanted his wash down to be. Look how big the gutters are. And you can see the hatches. The other thing I want to point out is we actually have a divider in here. So you can divide the space should you want to. So you can put uh, stuff on the bottom, put a divider, and then you can have stuff on top. This has been really good with the kids. He has this on either side. And you can see how roomy everything is. And it's key locking latches. Again, Gemlux. I also want to pull out everything on the, all the molds, all the hatches, everything follows the line of the boat. So often you see so many curves going on. You see the round transom, the rounded live well, but then you'll see a square hatch. This is beautiful. Everything on this boat, the lines follow each other. So now we're going to the combing. He did the West Coast look. He has the combing bolsters that hits him right at the knee. Should he need to have anything? Now, something cool. He's got the LeBrock seats. These are the custom ordered LeBrock seats. They are custom made and measured for him. They slide on a track for him and his wife. The armrest folds nice and up, and he still has plenty of walking room right here. And by the way, walking room, look at this gunnel. This is a wide gunnel boat that you can jump up and down all day long on. There's no rattle here. There's no flex on the gunnel. There's none of that stuff. Uh, come here to the back of the boat. We're gonna open up the well. You have another 40 gallon with a tow kick here underneath. And I can tell you this will keep ice. This will hold bait. This is wet storage and this is dry storage. But look at how much room we have back here. So you have the well, you have the seats, you have plenty of room. And one of the cool features I love about this boat is you can move the console forward or backwards, move 
uh, the leaning post set up any way you want, forward or backwards. There's just so many little things on this boat. The system is Wet Sounds. Wet Sound is a great company. They're making a name for themselves. There's a lot of good companies out there. Uh, the sound system on this is so incredible. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to work everything. There's RGBs, there's lights that beat to the, uh, to the music. Um, I think there's over 200 colors that he can pick and there's 10 speakers in this boat and this thing sounds incredible so it's gonna blast at the sandbars. But anyways, the rod holders are set up for 15 and 30 degrees. Notice they're the nicer kind, not the kind with screw heads on it. You can run your flatline clips. I have personally trolled for Dolphin off of the Keys, off of uh, New Smyrna Beach, and uh, it, this is just a great setup to fish. That's what a hybrid is for. Um, moving forward, the console. You have a seven inch toe kick. Stay right there, Tanner. Seven inch toe kick all the way around. And again, I wanna point out, there is no plastic trim everywhere. So many of these boats that we compete with, they have plastic trim on the top, plastic trim everywhere, and every time you clean the boat, you find a screw. You're not gonna find that here. Everything is bolted, glassed, and bonded. That is, that's to say something. This top was custom made for him. Speakers are recessed. This is a rear shade hard top with integrated speakers and electronics that you can stand and walk on. He's got backing plates inside for a future radar. Okay, the rod holders are welded at his height. Now I can't reach these, but Nick is taller than me. So this was custom made for his reach. I mean, there's just so much going on. You got the grab rails, you got the Etsy wheels, what he wanted to spec. The gap between here is actually measured for him and the footrest. We measure even the footrest for the clients. Everything you see here from the Simrad setup, the 16 inch to the seven inch underneath to the Boca Tech switches, to the jump seat in the front, to the subwoofer on the side, and then going to the front of the boat, this is another magic feature. You have a huge deck, huge anchor locker, and then you have your rod storage that you can hold up to nine foot rod. So if you fly fish, or if you don't wanna fly fish, you simply just fold this in. You can slide in you know, your pole spears, your spear gun, your long fins, everything. And with a trolling motor, it doesn't hit. Then he's got his wash down right here. He has a rod holder set up here for drifting bait. But here's one of the other cooler features we like. This is a huge fish box. Again, it drains outside the boat. Everything goes outside the boat. <coughs> when they're doing the sandbar days, okay, and they will know. Again, I want to go back to the fish box. The fish box is insulated. The live well in the back is insulated, and so are the two front hatches. So he has four coolers standard in the boat. So you can use, again, for wet storage, dry storage. You can physically put a keg in that rear live well if you wanted to go to the sandbar and really do it up. But in here, we have another recessed compartment like the two in the back. You can actually put a tray across a starboard, and you can put in your five-gallon buckets. I have pictures of that. You also could divide that space and do whatever you want with it. We still doing good? Okay, now going to the front. If you want to go to the sandbar, we have magnetic cushions. These cushions, actually I got it upside down. They are magnetic. That is an industrial strength, 25 pounds per magnet going on for the backrest. This is what they wanted for when they're going to the sandbar. The cushions just go right on the front and lock it down. So you can open up and move everything around. I have this latch open still. But the fact that you have magnetic and it's easy to take on and off is insane. Going up to the front, we're gonna pull these off. Doesn't take long. When they wanna get inside, Tanner walk up front. Remember, it's a hardcore fishing boat that we can also take out the family. A five gallon bucket even fits in there. But there is the recirc live well, again, using the gem locks on the wall. Notice the way that that comes in. Water comes in and it goes around. So this bait well is just not your standard bait well. It'll actually hold greenies, your white bait over here. You have your cooler, dry storage or wet storage. Again, it has a divider. So if you want to put ice down on the bottom, put a, a, your uh, piece of starboard on top, you can put all your sandwiches. And again, it can open and close with the lid. Closing this down, and key locking latches on everything. Now, <coughs> C-Deck is standard 
on the underside of all the hatches. That is a huge raw space. And you know, I know it sounds a little crazy, but for the video, I'm gonna jump in here, give you guys a depth perspective. Three guys can get in here. This is open all the way up to the fish box. What does that mean? That means you can get to all your fittings, you can get to everything you need to. I can store in this boat two full-size bean bags, all my Coast Guard gear for nine people, and my fishing bags. And by the way, I have two big tackle bags and still have room in here, but you can get to everything. And everything in this boat on the top side and underneath is insanely finished out. Again, with all grip finish. We doing okay on time? Cleats on either side, trolling motor, going up to the upper station. We have the jump seat, which I'll get pictures of opening this thing up, is impressive. Now, he's got a lot of power. He's got a lot of speakers, a lot of LED lights, a lot of amps. We have everything he needs in there. It is easy to get access to. It's labeled for him so he can get to it. Then up top, we have the helm box that you see custom made. And by the way, there is not a seam anywhere on that boat or on that helm pod. It's completely seamless, all finished out by hand. And that rigid light is inside integrated and he still has tilt room on it. It's a schedule 80 pipe sleeved and there's backing plates into the floor, backing plates on the console as well, tearing it all the way up. Uh, again, there's 21 rod holders up there. He's got side rod holders going down so he can angle down for crabs and stuff into the back rear. Uh, live well, he's got room for two people up there. So the top actually flares and he can fit two oversized people. And when he's driving down here, he's not looking at anybody's ankles or calves. He actually, what we have is what we call a three quarter tower. So a three quarter full tower is what I would call this thing. But this boat is amazing. So again, 2410, Eight, uh, eight, nine at the top, 115 gallons of fuel, uh, expandable, piano hinges, everything is drilled and tapped. There is just two tone, all grip, inside, outside, C deck under the gunnel. And by the way, when I get to that part, the C deck under the gunnel, we all have kids running around. Now I do. So when you're at the sandbar, something so simple like this, that these fold up. So when he's not using these rod holders, they fold up. Nobody's gonna trip on anything. If he's fishing for group or he's fishing for tarp and he's running around, he's not gonna hit a rod holder. So at the end of the day, he's got 20 rod holders standard, you know, that come with the boat. Now, obviously he added a gazillion more, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of thought that went into this boat. I hope you guys out there enjoy this video. We're getting ready to put the boat in the water. We're gonna get some drone footage and some pictures of it. But at the end of the day, I just wanna say thank you to Nick and Allie. I wanna say, say thank you to all our East Cape customers because you've heard us talk about this for years. And you know, we've always been off the cuff. We always do things raw. You know, we just do what one shot takes. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm sure there's gonna be a few people that have to say something negative, but at the end of the day, it's maybe the way I presented it. If you don't like what we have, Remember, we can make it work for you because we are truly custom. That's what makes East Cape different than everybody else. And by the way, everybody always wants to know how much something costs, okay? It depends on what we do. This boat is priced in the middle of the market. I will tell you a boat like this tricked out, in all honesty, is gonna be well north of 150, okay? However, show me another boat that has all the custom stuff that, that this boat has with all the features built into it, it will always be more, okay? So I want to thank you guys out there. Y'all take care. We've got some cool pictures coming up, some video. See ya.